if RDS is the second reaction, which I had done in class earlier, your answer was R2 equals K2, K1 over K1 prime. NO squared BR2. Yeah. Okay, so if the second reaction one is a rate determining step, which we didn't know when we solved this problem this way, can you see how these that look a little similar? So this is assuming if. Uh, which would mean K2 is really small or really big if it's the rate determining step. Small. Really small. It's slow. The rate determining step means it's slow, so the rate constant must be really tiny. What happens here if K2 is really tiny? Well, whenever you add two things up, the tiny things disappear. So take a look at this. I'm going to cover up the tiny part. Do you see how the answers are uh, going to be the, exactly the same? So this answer includes the original one that we had done already. Um, but you don't have to make an assumption about the rate determining step when you do it this way. You don't have to assume, oh, that step is really slow or the rate constant is really small. Here, you can just see, oh, if it was small in that situation, yeah, you would get the same answer. But it doesn't have to be small. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So you find the, um, the third, and then you assume that the denominator, the is zero, and then it would be the answer if uh, RDS was the second, the second reaction was slow, right? I think you have to say that one more time. Sorry. Okay, yeah. so initially we didn't know which one was slow, right? Right, right. Okay, so we did all that. And then to find the second one where RDS is slow, the second equation, we would just make the, the denominator, the, K, the K2, we would assume that's zero? Yeah, really tiny compared to K1. Okay, so what about the top K2 then? Why is it? Well, in a multiplication, oh. that's a great question. In a multiplication, there's nothing you can do if something's tiny or small, because you're still multiplying them together to get a new number. But like if this, so this is 100, and this is 1, 100 times 1 is 100. If you say that's 0, 100 times 0 would be 0, you'd be kind of messed up. But if this is 100, and this is 1, you could ignore this, because whether it's 100 or 101, those are pretty similar numbers. Is that OK? So that only works for addition not for multiplication. Uh, and if you vaguely remember weak acid stuff, when we assumed that something was small, it only was in the addition part of the equilibrium expression, not in the multiplication part. That's all just a general math principle. Yes, again. Yeah. So we, for this kind of case, we just used the second one because that was the one that gave us the product, right? Correct. So should we do that in the other cases even if, like, would that give us a more precise answer, like you're showing us? Uh, we don't need to assume anything? You, well, uh, you always take the, the slow step as the rate if that's stated. That's going to be the most important because it's the slow step that will determine the overall rate. For example, you know, if you're in a race and it relays per lap and three of the people run 100 miles an hour and one person runs one mile an hour, that one mile an hour person will basically set the time for the, right. for the whole race. So you always want to do that even though that's not the fourth leg. You know, okay. the producing step if you want. So, so you always take the slow step first if that's not stated take the producing step. So could the producing step potentially not be the slow step, but we would take it anyway? Uh, no, you. Uh, it's potentially not the slow step, but you'd always take the slow step. 
if it's stated. I, I mean, in this case now, if it's not stated, you would still take the producing step, even if That's right. potentially that isn't the sole step. Um, if later it shows up it's not the slow step, that doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe uh, I can do another illustration for you. If R, D, S is the first step, we didn't do this in class, but uh, that would be rate one equals, let me look at the reaction here because it's, it's on my paper. You can look on the paper. K1. And O, Br2. Um, so here, we'd say, oh, uh, what if the K, what that means, K1 and K1 prime are very large or very small? If, if the first step is the rate of turning step. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's also correct. Small. So they're really tiny. So look at the example now where this uh, is really tiny. What's going to happen to the K2s? They'll cancel. What happens to the NO? That cancels with one of these. So you're left with K1 NO Br2 which is this answer. So in fact, it didn't matter. Okay. This includes both conditions of slow steps. Is that helpful? Yeah. OK. So, but it's still rate 2. It just works out that way. Okay. It's uh, an, a very exhaustive answer, if, if you want, meaning it includes case 1 and case 2 in this case. OK. okay. Thanks. Other questions about that? Yes. That doesn't matter. What did it matter? What did I say doesn't matter? Oh, Jenny was slow. concerned about what if the slow step is is or is not the same as the rate as the production step. In this case, the production step was step two, where the products were produced. Well, um, if it, I, I just toss up an example to counter that, where what if the rate determining step was the first step, meaning k1 and k1 prime are small you're still going to get the same answer. So this reduces to the same answer. In that case, you solve for the production step, but it reduces to if the first step was the rate determining step. That probably didn't help in any way. But OK, yeah, let's try a new question. Do you think, since you said it in class before, that uh, you know, the reactions go you know, back and forth, um, is it easy? to assume that the second one would be the one that's going only one direction would be the slow step? Okay, yeah. If there's one that's, if there's a step that's reversible and there's a second step that's not reversible, usually the non-reversible step is the slow step. But it doesn't have to be. Um, but in case two sort of problems, yeah, that second one's going to be the reversible, uh, the slow step, and use the reversible reaction to find an equation for the intermediate. I know, it, it still, it's okay if it feels still cloudy at this point. You've only seen one example of really difficult ones. Yeah? Have you given uh, problems with ideas for the idea to the whole of the two steps? For the two can you have more than two intermediates? Definitely. And you will see problems like that. And will it have more than two elementary steps? Definitely. It could have like six, seven elementary steps. Yeah. Yes? So when you have multiple elementary steps, will that just pretty much increase the complexity of the basic equation uh, of Yeah. When you add multiple elementary steps, I might not be able to solve it in this board space, but it gets super complex algebraically, but all the concepts are the same. It's just the algebra gets more complicated. Yeah. And sometimes they can be tricky too. 